Welcome to the Chemistry, Biology and Math Revision Hub. Today we are doing the Pearson at Excel International A-Level Biology Unit 2 for June 2022. And uh, this is the part 1 video. I'll put the link to the second part video below the description box. Let's begin with question 1. Question 1 says, the diagram shows an organ system of a female. So this is part of the female reproductive system. We can see there is a fallopian tube, the ovary, the uterus, the vagina, as well as the cervix. So they're going to say, state what is meant by the term organ system. An organ system is a group of organs working together to perform a specific function. An example of an organ system is the digestive system. In here, we have organs like the pancreas, the liver, the stomach, and so on. They work together to ensure that food that has been eaten is broken down into smaller molecules that can be absorbed by the body. So the next part says, gametes are produced in one of the tissues in the ovary. State what is meant by the term tissue. A tissue is a group of similar cells working together to perform a specific function. It is very important that you write the word similar cells. Similar is very important because if you just say a group of cells, that could be misleading. A tissue is made up of similar cells. So, yeah, that's the end of that part. Let's continue. Here they say, gametes are specialized for their functions. Complete the table to show the correct statement for each structure found in gametes. Now, gametes are sex cells, including the sperm as well as the egg. So, if they are specialized for their function, we can try to see what makes sense from this table. They say, which structure propels male gametes towards the female gametes? That is the flagellum. So the answer here should be A. And then, which structure is modified by the action of the cortical granules? That is the zona pellucida. So the answer should be B. And next they say, which structure produces ATP by respiration? It should be the mitochondria. So the answer is C. And D, which structure contains linear DNA? That should be the nucleus. So the answer here is that. So if you had done like that, you get six marks for question one, and that'll be okay. So we're done with this. Let's continue to question two. Question two says the diagram shows part of a prokaryotic cell as drawn by a student. So I am going to delete what I drew here so that I can show you how this question was before I wrote anything onto this paper. So if I take it out, it was like that. They labeled the cell wall and the flagellum and they asked you to draw and label a capsule and two pili on the diagram. So remember the capsule is a slime capsule, so when you draw it, it is going to be the enclosure around which is that, that is a slime capsule, and the two pili are here. You had to draw and label them in order to get the marks here, which were two marks, as you can see here. The next part B says, the effect of concentration of sodium chloride solution on the growth of bacteria was investigated, the same number of L PCM bacteria were added to test tubes containing different concentrations of sodium chloride solution. The volume of sodium chloride solution was the same in each test tube. This is to ensure consistency or uh, that everything is maintained constant. The growth rates of the bacteria were recorded after a set uh, period of time. The investigation was repeated by B thermos factor bacteria and the graph shows the results of this investigation. So let's continue. Here we can see the results. On the vertical axis, we see the growth rate. On the horizontal axis, we see the concentration of sodium chloride solution. So the, there was a change or increase in the concentration of sodium hydroxide and the sodium chloride solution, and then they monitored how the dependent variable or, or varied basically using the two different bacteria, L, PCM, as well as the B, thermos factor. So we can see here. So the next part they say, comment on the results of this investigation. So if we are commenting on the results, it means look at the graph and make any, write anything you see from the graph. So I said initially, increase in salt concentration up to six grams per decimeter cubed led to increase in the growth rate. If you can consider, you can see initially, mainly for this one here, you can see there is an increase. So in the growth rate, and then I went on to say that above that concentration, there was a decrease in growth rate for both bacteria. Then, after 10 gram per decimeter cubed of sodium chloride, 
there was a rapid decrease. You, you can see mainly for this one here. After 10 grams, you can see it rapidly decreases. The other is not as rapid, but this one, there was a, a rapid decrease. So a rapid decrease in the growth rate of L, PCM. And then B, thermal factor had a higher growth rate than that of L, PCM at all sodium chloride concentrations. That is a good observation. And then there was continuous growth for B, thermal factor at above 22 to 25, about 22 to 25. Uh, gram per decimeter cube so sodium chloride where the growth of LPCM had stopped. As you can see here on the graph, this had stopped here at around 22 to 25, but the other at that same concentration was still growing. As you can see at this concentration, the other were, there was still some growth of the other bacteria. So this brings us to the end of question two. Let's move on to question three. Question three, the use of plant products can contribute to sustainability. Fruits from calabash plants are used to make bowls. The photograph shows a bowl made from a Nigerian calabash fruit. So moving down here, they say, a spherical calabash fruit was cut in half to make two bowls. Each bowl had a radius of 25 centimeters. Calculate the volume of one bowl to the nearest whole number. And they want us to use the formula for volume of a sphere, which is 4 over 3 pi r cubed. Remember, since we are calculating the volume of one ball, it should be half the volume of the sphere. So, when I said volume of a sphere is 4 over 3 pi r cubed, and the radius we were given is 25, so I put it into the equation, and I uh, fed everything into my calculator, and I got this as the answer. So, we have to divide this by 2 to get the volume of one of the balls. So, dividing by 2, it gave me this. But the answer is supposed to be to the nearest whole number surrounding it of, I got 32725 centimeters cubed. So the next part says, explain why bowls made from calabash fruit are sustainable resource. To be sustainable, it means something can be grown, or in this case, it can be, uh, we can be able to have it for longer periods of time without any inconvenience. So here I say the bowls are made from fruit. And the fruits can be grown so the bowls are renewable. We can renew continuously have these bowls. And then the bowls are biodegradable, meaning they can break down uh, naturally if they are wasted away or if they are thrown away, they can break down naturally. And the process of their production is carbon neutral because it's the fruit, they take up CO2 as they grow. And if they are to be broken down, they release the same amount of CO2 like the one they took away. So we can classify them as being carbon neutral. So moving on, here they say, fibers from the stems of the calabash plant have many uses. Some of these fibers are formed from phloem, sclenchyma, as well as the xylem. They ask how many of the following statements about sclenchyma fibers are correct. They provide support to the plant, that is correct. They are used to translocate organic solids, this is wrong. Translocation occurs in the phloem, and they are used to transport water and mineral ions. This is also wrong because this is the job of the xylem. So among all these three, it's only one that is correct. So the answer is a B. Next, they say, compare and contrast the structures of phloem sieve tubes and xylem vessels. Remember when they say compare and contrast, they want to see similarities as well as differences. So I began with similarities. Both have tubular structures. They're both tubes. And both have non-nucleus, or non-nuclei, you'll say like that. Both contain cellulose. So these are similarities. However, the difference is flowing sieve tubes are not hollow. They contain a cytoplasm while the xylem vessels are hollow. Flowing sieve tubes have perforated sieve plates, and the xylem do not have that. Remember, the end walls of the xylem are removed or they are broken down or they disintegrate. They are not there. Also, phloem sieve tubes are not lignified. There is no secondary thickening while the xylem vessels contain lignin, so they are thickened. So this brings us to the end of question three. I will go to question four. Question four. There are 11 species of monchark in Asia. One of these is the Indian monchark. The photograph shows an Indian monchark. So we can see it here. Then they say the female Indian monjax body cells have three pairs of chromosomes. 
dividing cells can be taken from the body of a female Indian monarch, draw one of these cells showing the arrangement of chromosomes uh, in, in the anaphase stage of mitosis. So you need to know that during anaphase of mitosis, sister chromatids will be pulled apart. So since they told us that here we have three pairs of chromosomes, I can assume we have maybe that, that, and that, then maybe that and that. However, this would be uh, before, uh, during interface, basically even before the replication. Now, during interface, replication can occur and we can produce sister chromatids. So like that, maybe like that, and like that. Now, in total, we still have three pairs of chromosomes, but actually we have a total of six potential, or I would say 12, that can potentially be separated. So it means when we go through this anaphase, we are going to separate that away from that, that away from that. So the things that are going to be separated are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That is why here you can see we have a 6 here and 6 here. However, during metaphase, only the sister, cro sister chromosomes, or I would say sister chromatids, will be closer and then they'll be separated during the anaphase stage. In your diagram, you had to show a centri centrioles, two of them. You had to show the spindle fibers as well as the chromosomes that are being separated. So that was important in order to get the two marks. Moving on, here they say the diagram shows the relative proportions of time that a cell spends in each part of the cell cycle. We can see there is cytokinesis, mitosis, as well as interface. Since this is a pie chart, the total angle is 360. So they've given us, they say, the cell was in interface for nine hours. If it was in interface for nine hours, it means this is the time to find the time. Uh, if I call X or if I let X be the total time spent, it means 270 over 360 times the total time spent gives us nine hours. And we can make X the subject to find the total time spent. So here they said the cell was in anaphase for 20 minutes. Calculate the angle that would represent anaphase plotted on this pie chart. So I said, let X be the total time spent. And then using the part of interface 270 over 360 times the total time spent gives us nine hours. When I make X the subject, I got the total time spent to be 12 hours. But remember, in anaphase, it was 20 minutes. So I said, if the total time spent was 20 hours, I had to convert the 20 minutes into hours as well. So 20 over 60 gives me one over three hours. And then I said, lay the angle for anaphase BY over the 360 times the total time spent, which is 12 hours, gives us 1 over 3 hours. And when I made Y the subject, I got 10. So in the pie chart, anaphase should be 10 degrees. Let's go on. Here they say the diagram shows one of the chromosomes of an Indian Mojak cell. They say state what is meant by the term locus. A locus is a location of genes or a gene on a chromosome. They go on to say, explain how the chromosomes of an Indian Monjak egg cell could differ from those of a body cell. Of course, we know egg cells are produced by meiosis while body cells by mitosis. And we know egg cells are uh, haploid while body cells are diploid. So I said the egg cell is haploid, meaning half the number of chromosomes found. It has half the number of chromosomes that are found in the body cell. The chromosomes in the egg cell can have a different sequence of bases due to alterations that can occur. You remember random assortment can occur, crossing over can occur. So those can lead to change or alterations in the sequence of bases or in the genes that are present. So the body cells and the sex cells or gametes could have different arrangement or different, and they could have different sequences of bases basically. So this was okay. Then uh, moving to the next part, it says, Chinese Munjok cells contain 23 pairs of chromosomes. The photograph shows a Chinese monjak. So here they say the Chinese monjak looks similar to the Indian monjak. However, if they breed together, they produce offsprings that are infertile. Remember, they say the other had three pairs. Now this one here has 23 pairs. If they have two or if they, they are to, uh, they, to bring about offsprings or have offsprings, they'll be infertile. So let's see the reason why. Remember, they're asking us suggest why the offsprings will be infertile. So I said, 
the offsprings will be infertile because the parents are different species. That is number one. Or it should be because the gametes produced are not haploid. Sometimes if gametes are not haploid, there will be no, uh, the offsprings will be star sterile basically. And then another part is, remember if an offspring is to be fertile, sometimes the chromosomes have to be able to pair up. If the maternal and paternal chromosomes cannot pair up as a result of any circumstance of failure to restore the diploid number of chromosomes, then there is a chance of sterility of be, or being infertile. So this brings us to the end of question four, as well as the end of this video. Thank you for being with us. Please do not forget to subscribe to our channel. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.